Hello and welcome to another uh, edition of our weekly webinars. I am Mark McCarran, Westcott's Chief Investment Officer. And the focus today is, a, as usual, a quick update on the markets where we stand uh, today, our outlook going forward, but more of a focus today on our U.S. equity strategy and why style matters. So just a quick review of the agenda. Um, we're going to start by looking at the economic and markets um, situation as of May 1st. Uh, we've had a strong April, uh, and we want to give a little insight as to what's going on. We also want to talk a little bit about what impact the market behavior and the economic um, environment that we're looking at today has had on Westcott's portfolio framework as usual, again, with a focus on our U.S. equity strategy. And then finally, we'll end with our outlook. So let's just jump right in. Um, so the market update through May, um, you know, really starting out by looking at um, what's going on outside the US first and foremost, Asia and Europe are beginning to relax some of their lockdowns. And there is some evidence of how that has helped the economies uh, both in Asia and in, in Europe uh, begin to recover. But that recovery is relatively uneven. There's talk of factories in China being open, people going back to work, but not necessarily going back into the restaurants or uh, taking domestic flights. So uh, I think the message is going forward is unlikely to be a smooth sailing recovery, but a slow and uneven one. Um, I think the good news is that the US continues to provide uh, support uh, in the form of loans uh, for small businesses. And um, the program that was initiated in March continues to be tweaked uh, throughout April. And this is a good sign, uh, again, providing some stability during these uncertain times. There's also uh, some good news, um, although very early stages, that uh, there's progress being made on potential therapies for COVID-19. Now, this is an... Um, a done deal in any way, but obviously the market is looking for good news and beginning to trade as, um, you know, looking through the shorter term uncertainties and looking forward to uh, a time when there are therapies or even even a vaccine uh, for COVID-19. Um, so that's really the, po the focus of our conversation today is uh, what is the stock market doing um, and its behavior relative to what the real economy is doing. And we can look at um, evidence of first quarter and second quarter earnings or first half earnings for 2020. Um, and you can see the impact really of what's going on um, in, in the real world. So how are earnings uh, being impacted? How are top line sales uh, being impacted? And what is the stock market focused on? So let's jump right into that. Um, so on this slide, we're showing a market update specifically through the end of April, that was yesterday. Um, and we're showing here the S&P 500 index and a three year period ended April 30th, 2020. Um, first and foremost, it's been a very strong April. In fact, if you look at this chart, we are well off the lows uh, reached on, on March 23rd. In fact, the S&P 500 itself is up 26.5% since that time frame. Um, and April's gains, very importantly, were broad-based. That means it wasn't just one or two companies, one or two sectors, but it was broadly across the board, large and small, value and growth. And I think that's why style matters. Um, and we'll get into that more specifically later in the presentation. And I think what um, is encouraging to us is that even the economically sensitive sectors uh, participated in April. Um, as you might remember, April was also a period of time where the energy market became extremely volatile. If you look at oil price futures and how they traded uh, throughout April, the, uh, the May contract actually went into negative territory as we talked before. And that's really because the uncertainties around when the U.S. and global economies reopen has caused demand for energy to go way down. And with declining demand, uh, prices really have to respond and react. 
and uh, they reacted by falling pretty dramatically, all-time lows. But even with that volatility uncertainty uh, in the oil price market, what we've seen is a significant rebound in energy-related stocks. But this is off a very significant low. They are still well down in absolute returns so far in 2020. But the broad-based recovery that we saw in April is encouraging. So before we talk about the future and what's going on um, in, in the way we see it for the rest of the year, um, I want to spend a little bit more time looking at what's going on in, um, in markets and why style matters. So first and foremost, looking at this slide, the U.S. market return over the last one year, and to be very honest, the last three and five years, has been driven almost exclusively by large cap growth stocks. And we're going to um, define what that is in a moment. Um, but in other words, it's been, a, it's been a very narrow market. Very few things have worked really well. Most things have not worked very well if you look at it in, on average. So um, we'll get into that in a moment. But first, you know, a very narrow market can be defined as uh, which sectors or regions of the world are doing well versus those that are not. The U.S. over the last one year through April 30th is uh, only modestly down as defined by the S&P 500 or the broader market in case, in this case, being the Vanguard total stock market, which is the index we use. You compare that to the non-U.S. markets, over the last one year, the, those markets are down over 10%, closer to 12%. So it's been a very U.S.-centric uh, performance of global markets, not only for the last one year, but the last three and five. So let's take a little closer look at the U.S. markets specifically, what's happening inside the U.S. market. We break the world up into four basic buckets. Uh, the first that we show on this chart is uh, the bucket that includes small companies that are trading at cheap valuations. That's what we mean by small value. And if you look at that grouping of companies, their stocks are down almost 25% over the last one year. And that's even with a market in aver on average down less than 1%. So it's that segment of the market that's taken the brunt of the underperformance. Uh, and then we have another bucket, larger companies still cheap, trading at cheaper valuations today. Uh, that's down over 10%. And even if you look at growth companies, a lot of people talk about growth is where, the comp where it's at. Uh, small companies that are growth oriented, and what we mean by that too is that they tend to also be a little more expensive. Uh, their valuations are higher than that of, of companies that are trading cheaper. Uh, even those companies are down almost 10%. So what's driving this nearly flat return over the last one year is exclusively large growth companies, companies that you might recognize and we'll talk about in a moment that are very, very big and growing very quickly and has been almost then exclusively driving the overall market. Not only for the, you know, and that's what's unique about the U.S. versus the non-U.S. is that these companies, um, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, we'll go into those in a moment, are U.S.-centric, U.S.-based, and driving global um, markets higher. What's really important to note is that the Westcott portfolio strategy that we have, particularly in the U.S., is built for today's markets. We need to have exposure to all of these areas of the market, small value, large growth, uh, large value, small growth, small value. Uh, I'll do that again. Small value, large value, small growth, and large growth. All of these are very, very important parts of a portfolio. We want to have, and we do have, quite a large exposure to the large growth segment of the market. But we also want to prepare for tomorrow. And preparing for tomorrow means holding and allocating portfolio to areas of the market that aren't working currently, but will have the valuation support and the quality to outperform in the future. And uh, no stocks are totally immune to a market environment like this, not even the big growth companies that we talked about. So I just want to talk a little bit more about the dominance of these names in the U.S. market. 
First, uh, what we're showing here in the graph are the top 20 stocks in the S&P 500 index and their weightings. So to read this, Microsoft is the largest stock in the S&P 500, and it's currently at a 5.5% weight in the index. It's followed very closely by Apple uh, at 4.9, Amazon 4.1, and goes all the way down. So it includes AT&T, Merck, Walt Disney Company, Exxon Mobil. All these names are household names, but the first five represent over 20% of this index. So when we are talking about what the S&P 500 did, when you read about what the U.S. market did, you're effectively reading about what Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook did, because they are dominant within this index. All five, by the way, are considered growth stocks. And um, apologies for the math uh, in this, but basically the idea here is that how do these, how does Microsoft get 5.5% of this index? Um, well, company size, which is how big a company is, is a function of the price of its stock at any given time and the number of shares it has outstanding. How many shares it offers investors to invest in. So if Microsoft, for example, doesn't issue any more shares, but its price moves up dramatically, it becomes bigger. It becomes bigger relative to everything else if the price goes up more than everything else. So effectively, a higher price, which potentially could mean less attractive valuation going forward, means it has more weight in the index. So the market environment has been rewarding um, the largest companies that we're listing here and continuously so, so that now these five companies represent 20% of the index and their prices continue to be higher and their size and dominance, if you will, becomes even bigger. And we want to be careful not to have too much exposure to the largest cap names um, exclusively. We want to make sure that we have an allocation to a broad market. And the broad market is probably best defined uh, by uh, taking out the impact of, of size or, or, or market cap weighting for the top five and comparing what the broader market did in another way. So we do this by looking at the S&P 500 index, which we're showing again the one year return to April, which was um, just above 1%. And this is, this is the S&P index return. In the prior chart, we showed the Vanguard total stock index, so it's a little bit different. But the S&P 500 was actually up over this one-year period. But what's interesting, if you take out the impact of those 5 to 10 top names and just equal weight every name in the S&P 500, the actual return of that index is down 9% over this one year period, not up, but down. And what it shows is that the impact of those five or, or 10 companies in the S&P have been so great that they've outperformed everything else so to, to such a degree that the rest of the market has underperformed. You can't see it when you look at the S&P 500 index average. So I think what's important is that uh, the portfolio that we're managing, um, you know, the weighting that we have to each of these companies matters quite a lot. And active management in particular allows us to be more diversified in our allocations, less concentrated. In some cases, less concentration means that we're uh, better balanced. But in some cases, like the current one, it means that the total portfolio may not participate as much as those top five names are. But we think over the long run, being more diversified less concentrated and having a broader exposure is the right way to manage a portfolio over the long run. Um, so as an example, and just a reminder, the characteristics of the portfolio we manage, particularly in the US equity strategy, is allocated across market capitalization or another, another word, size, large companies and small companies. We also have a good mix between value companies and growth companies. Um, and each manager we use within the strategy has their specific role. 
Uh, we talked about some of those and we've highlighted some of those in prior webinars, but Ivy, for example, is a growth oriented manager focusing on the growth segment of the market, whereas DFA is a uh, manager that focuses on value investing. Both have a role, both are, are good at what they do, and we wanna make sure that we're balanced across um, each of their skill sets so that we're prepared for what's next. So with that as a framework, you know, the next question is what's next, um, our outlook. So the global economy will uh, in absolutely suffer a severe recession due to the global lockdowns that we've all been living with. However, the easier money, monetary conditions that the Federal Reserve policy, that lowering borrowing rates, um, and the continued fiscal support, uh, like the uh, small business support that we're getting from uh, the US government, has provided very, very valuable stability during this period of uncertainty. Uh, and in our view, will support an eventual economic recovery, um, perhaps in the second half of 2020. However, the strong rebound in stocks that we saw in April, while very, very nice to see, is unlikely to continue at the same pace. But we are encouraged by the breadth of the performance, meaning it's not just one or two or five companies, it's broader than that. Um, and typically, what we've found is that sectors that are most exposed to the economic cycle, you know, energy cyclicals we talked a little bit about, they tend to lead the market recovery um, on the other side of an economic slowdown. And that's really important. And, and again, it's why style matters uh, and, and why we're balanced, we're allocated in a diversified way, and we're preparing for what's next. So as always, thank you uh, for joining us and for your continued trust in Westcott. Um, we continue to ask, and we're very pleased to see that we have lots of questions and lots of uh, conversations with our clients. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me uh, or your advisor with any questions. Thank you.